Previously on Guns and Glitter, Grace made the decision to become a stripper, the only job position that was available to her so that she could pay off her father's medical bills. She met the other vixens, the women at the Foxton Gentlemen's Club, and she earned her first client. This is Cece Wrights. My name is Cece Lepke, and today I will be sharing with you part six of my story, Guns and Glitter. Before we begin, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification button so you'll know when the next video in this series comes out. Three weeks in, Grace had a steady clientele of rich businessmen looking for companionship. It wasn't exactly the people she'd expected to find at a strip club, but it did mean that she didn't have to give awkward lap dances to guys in sweatpants. At least, not as frequently as she would have expected. Her favorite part of the night was dancing on stage. She wouldn't have expected it, but the instant gratification of having men stuff dollar bills into her underwear as she showed off her mediocre hip-hop dance skills was strangely gratifying. It made her feel sexy and wanted. Powerful. There were always bad days, though. A few nights in, she was booed off stage by a group of drunks. That same night, three separate guys grabbed her butt as she gave them lap dances. Kira saw the last one and nearly jumped over a table to strangle the man before a bouncer intervened and dragged her off of him before he put the drunken idiot into a stranglehold and escorted him out of the bar. You have to stand up for yourself. Kira dropped heavily into the seat the man once occupied and proceeded to drink the remainder of his pitcher of beer. And if you can't stand up for yourself, call for help. Let us stand up for you. Grace shook. Her body was cold and she felt like she was going to throw up. Kira dragged Grace down onto her lap and wrapped her arms protectively around her shoulders. It's okay, sugar. I got you. That night, the girls showed Grace their favorite self-defense moves. Some were less helpful than others. Kira, for instance, always went for the throat. Like an animal, she said, with a grin and a sultry wink. Others were a little more practical, like digging nails into cuticles and using an arm as a lever to toss someone over the fulcrum of her hip. After weeks of the work, Grace was more confident than ever, and slipped into a steady routine that grew more and more comfortable. She was making upwards of $600 a night. Finally, she was able to get her papa out of St. Juan's and into Mercy Hospital's inpatient physical rehabilitation clinic. Mama was ecstatic. Miha, I'm so proud of you. Her eyes brimmed with tears. I was so worried about your papa. To think you'd find a job so quickly. My big shot businesswoman. She kissed Grace's forehead. It's just a temporary job, Mama. Grace held her hands stiffly in her lap. It should be enough to keep Papa in rehab until he's good enough to come home. The doctor said it should only be another week. Lulu sat next to her sister on the couch and gave her a quick hug. Then he has to stay on a special diet with his new heart pills. You don't need to worry about that, Guadalupe pinched Lulu's cheek. I'm just happy you finally can start your career and make something better of yourself. She wiped her tears and stood up. I promised, Miha, once your papa is back on his feet, you don't need to worry about us anymore. I want to see you buy a nice big house and a beautiful car. Meet a good man and give me a million grandbabies. I just want to take care of me familia. Grace hugged her sister back, then leaned heavily against the couch. Besides, I told you, it's only temporary, just until I can get us out of debt. Debt means nothing to me, Corazon. Guadalupe touched her face and smiled happily at her daughters. Now come, help me make some torts. Your abuelo and tios are coming over with some barbacoa to celebrate your fancy new job. The kitchen was sweltering with the three of them preparing tortillas and side dishes to serve at dinner. 
If the evening cooled off enough, it would be a perfect day to sit out on the small back patio with drinks and plates full of food as the Teos told stories and played jokes on one another. She was about to suggest it when Lulu pressed her cold fingers against Grace's neck. She squeaked and jumped away. A full plate of freshly cut vegetables nearly tipped out of her hands. Lulita, you brat! Lulu giggled. Sorry, Gracie. I just noticed you have glitter all over your neck. Grace set the plate down and tried to hide her blush. Oh, right. She furiously rubbed at the spot Lulu touched. Sure enough, her hand came back covered in glitter. She took two showers the night before and it still wasn't enough to get rid of the stuff. Were you swimming in craft supplies or something? Grace shook her head. No, it's just a thing I'm working on. What kind of thing? A stupid project. I won't have to do it for long. Grace washed her hands three times, but still the glitter clung to her skin. She rolled her eyes and returned to the table to mix up the ingredients for a cherry pie. With luck, the glitter would be edible. Lulu watched her for a few moments, then went back to pulling husks and silk off of corn and packing them into aluminum foil. Will you be at church this Sunday? Flour and butter clung to Grace's hands and crumbled around her fingers. No. That's the fourth time this month, Gracie. When was the last time you went to confession? I don't need it. It was hard not to read Lulu's raised eyebrow and quirked lips as condescending, but Grace did her very best. She knew her sister didn't mean it that way. Or, at least, she hoped Lulu didn't mean it that way. Church had never been very important to Grace. It would never be as important to Grace as it was to Lulu. Everyone who spent any time with Lulu knew the woman was practically a modern-day Mother Mary. Everyone needs confession, Graciela. You should lean on your church family more. I bet you haven't even tithed since you got your new job. I guarantee that God doesn't need the money as much as we do. We're supposed to tithe to the poor, then it should be fine keeping it to myself. I don't know many people who are as poor as us anyway. There are plenty of people, Gracie. Maybe you're not looking. I don't want to fight with you about religion, Lolita. Grace packed her disc of dough into plastic wrap and threw it in the refrigerator. Then don't. Just come to church with me on Sunday like a good Catholic chiquita. Lulu patted Grace's shoulder. You can speak to Father Timothy. I don't want to speak to Father Timothy, Louisa. I'm not going. I'm covering for one of the girls on Saturday, and I won't be home till late. Guadalupe stirred a pot on the stove and tutted. What kind of business has such strange hours, mija? It's just the way it is, Mama. Should I save some food for you when you get back, then? Gracie grinned and slipped into her mama's arms. She was warm, just a hair taller than Grace, and pleasantly plump. No, mama. I can eat there, but thank you. Guadalupe laughed and hugged her daughter back. You're such a cuddlebug today. Lulita, come. She held out a hand for Lulu to join the bear hug. Lulu grinned and swung her arms around Grace and her mother, squeezing tight. The front door opened and loud voices carried in through the living room. Waylu appeared in the kitchen doorway, toting a pan covered in foil. He set it down on the table and placed a hand over his heart. Ah, mi ama, cielo y corazón! Arms spread wide, he tucked himself into the group hug as Tio and Tias filtered into the room. Grace and Lulu giggled as their family piled on one by one, devolving into a pile of limbs and knocking the table to the side. That's it! Guadalupe pushed family members away, shooing them out of the kitchen. There's too many! My kitchen will collapse! Tio Jorge went in for another hug and she slapped him across the face with a flowery hand towel that she usually kept at her waist. Beasts! Out! They all laughed and slowly made their way out of the kitchen, stealing tastes from the prepared dishes on their way out. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Guns and Glitter. I hope you like the story so far. 
If this is your first time watching and you like what you heard, then make sure to go back and check out the story from the beginning. I'll post the link in the description. This is a continuing story, and I plan to share the entire thing with you on a weekly basis until the end. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification button so you'll know when the next episode comes out. Till next time, see you later!